everybody, it's Matthew Reinhardt. Welcome to another pop-up masterclass. That's right, you're all here in class. Let me check off the roll. Let's see, there's, there's, um, yes, you're here, and uh, no, you're, you're, he's not here, okay. Well, anyways, welcome to class. Today we're gonna do something a little different. Um, I've been thinking a lot about like what uh, mechanisms I wanna teach you this week. And I, you know, sometimes there's some things that I create in some of the books that I do that don't really have a name. You know, like they're just, hmm, what do I call them? Uh, weird stuff. They're weird stuff. I, I don't have any other way to describe them. You know, I started to get into you know, thinking about how to, you know, name things, and it, they became these really long, um, you know, multi-syllable words that didn't really make much sense to anyone. So I'm just going to, the, the series of classes that we're going to be doing over the next few weeks is just going to be called Weird Stuff, because I don't even know how to characterize it. It's just uh, weird. Yep, they're weird. All right, well, anyways... Let's get started. Everyone got their supplies? Now today, you know, I'm just using the usual, just uh, regular 110 pound cardstock, scissors. I have two kinds of tape here. You can use like masking tape, artist tape. This is just double stick tape here. Um, <clears throat> cardstock, I'm gonna use different colored cardstock so you guys can see what I'm making that's so weird. Oh, let me take this. It is weird, isn't it? Oh gosh. Mm. All right, let's get started. So weird stuff. Well, I'm going to show you something in one of my books, and I just don't know how to characterize it. So I'm just going to call it weird stuff number one. All right. Now, this came from a book I did really early in my career, um, uh, Dinosaurs, uh, Encyclopedia Prehistorica. One of my, everyone loves this pop. It's this T-Rex, right? Arr, 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 arr. Um, and what was really cool about this, um, <clears throat> okay, so I have some V-fold layers in here making the base of the neck and the mouth and the stuff like that. But what really makes this special is, is what's hiding all that. And they, they're these, these two, you know, the upper jaw and the lower jaw. And the way that they work is weird. It's weird. Um, it's not actually, it's attached to a layer. It's attached to the edges of, of a piece, but they aren't, I don't know, it's just weird. It's weird. So I'm going to show you how I did that. How I and you can can have parts that move off of another uh, piece, like a layer or something like that, or, or a V-fold. How you can have something move off the edge of that piece and um, make it work. So it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird, and I'm going to show you how it's done. Ready to get started? Let's go. All right, everyone, let's get started making something weird. Okay, this is going to be a weird mechanism. Um, we're going to fold this piece of cardstock in half, just like so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the engine for our pop-up, you know. Um, and you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put a pencil line down the center of the base page so that we can see, you can see that fold line. There we go. And what we're going to do, I think um, we're going to build our weird sort of arm swing out thing. Um, we're going to build it using V-fold riser. So let's take some of this paper here. We're going to make two V-fold risers. And I'm going to start with one just right here. And I'm just roughly cutting something. So, okay, this is how it's going to start. Right? Look at that's really off. Look how bad that is. Huh? And I'm going to fold it in half, and I'm going to line up the two bottom V's, that two bo or these two bottom edges right there. Because I know that that right there is a 90 degree angle, because it's the corner of a piece of paper. Right? I'm going to fold it. And let's see, here's what I'm going to do. We need to make sure that this edge here is parallel there. So I'm just going to eye it. Or I could use the lines of my base. Look at that on my my um, my mat here. And let's just use this straight edge. See, I've lined up this edge here. Now I just need to pick a parallel set of lines. I think I'll do ooh right there. Look at that. There's where I can cut it. Now I know that's that's pretty darn good. 
All right, and then I'm just going to, there is one part, one V-fold that I'm going to be needing. Because when we make a V-fold riser, remember, we have to have the bottom, which is going to be 90 degrees, and you're going to have to have this top part here cut 90 degrees as well. All right, because everything's going to move and we're going to put a platform on top. We'll get to more. Oh, you know what we need to do? We need to make a second one of these. So let's take the rest of our green paper here. I'm just going to, hmm, I think I'll just use my pencil and trace it just like so. Or you know what I could do? Ooh, that's a good one. Do that. So we'll just trace it very carefully. Mm-hmm. And I know my little fold lines there. And can you see it? Can you see that line? Just cut it out very carefully. Yada da dee. Yada da dee. So you can actually, um, we don't have to use V-fold risers for this, but we're going to because I showed you that the, the dinosaur jaw and it's all kind of based off of a v-fold riser sort of mechanism that's the that's the base but then the weird stuff those weird you know sort of arms that are built off those edges of the sides of the v-fold though that's the next step all right so here we go when we're making this weird stuff thing it doesn't necessarily have to be attached to a v-fold riser i'm using um one-sided tape here by the way so you can use masking tape or you can use this white artist tape. Um, that's what I use, but you don't have to use it. Okay, so see how I just tape that down. And now our V-fold, which is part of a V-fold riser, is going up and down. It's centered along the base page. What do we do with this other one? Let's tape it on down here. Again, I'm using one-sided tape to tape this V-fold down. Okay, there's two of them. Look, they move in unison. We learned this already. That's what you're all saying to me, I know. I know you're talking behind my back. Um, so we have the two of these together. Let's add the, the top piece. And um, I'm just going to make it like a rectangle. I'm going to use this color green because it's purdy. All right, I'm going to tape it up on top of there. What do we do with this rectangle? We fold it in half like so. I like to make a lot of um, sound effects when I do stuff like just like that. I gotta get some WD-40 for that. It's terrible. Um, <clears throat> we're going to line this up along the center and we're going to, but before we tape it down, we're going to use one side of tape and it's going to be up with the sticky side up up with the sticky side up. That made a lot of sense, didn't it? We're going to attach it to the top of those V-fold riser pieces with the sticky side, sticky, sticky, up. Just like so. And if that, that's not too bad. All right, so sticky side up. And what do we do? This rectangular piece, we're going to line it up with the center of our um, page and it's also by consequence uh, the center of the v-fold risers and we're just going to tape it down just like this make sure it's lined up properly there we go look at that v-fold riser action cool all right class you just missed when I sprayed soda all over my, my pop-up. But naturally, see, it's not too bad. It gives it a little bit of extra, you know, texture, right? It smells nice, too. <sighs> Caffeinated. All right, here we go. So we have our V-fold uh, riser moving up. And we're going to actually build something off of the sides, one of the sides. But one of the things that I see that I'm going to need to do before I do that is these edges are wider than this rectangle. So I'm gonna cut it ever so simply like this with my scissors. I'm just gonna make sure it lines up with the edge of my rectangle there. So see, I'm just cutting that part. And if you, if you have a, um, 
If you have a, like a real delicate scissors like I do, like that, I'm just gonna get in there. It's almost like I'm doing a little surgery, cutting away those parts. Okay, and so I'm just, I wanna make sure that when I do this, that the edges of our, the top of our platform of our V-fold riser, and I don't know if it's a platform, but this top portion, this, this area here, the, the roof of our V-fold riser, the edge on the sides is the same on the actual V-fold riser. So you can do it a number of ways. You could cut it with a pair of scissors like I'm doing. You could also use your X-Acto knife. Let's see, where is, or if you have, or whatever they call it, a craft knife. You could use a ruler if you wanted, like so. And then you could cut it like that. This is just another way you could do it. Now you gotta be careful that you don't cut through the base page. But we're just playing around and learning about stuff, so it doesn't matter. Um, a friend of mine recently uh, showed me, um, JP, he showed me something. How you doing there, bud? Um, he showed me something really cool. They, they actually have these miniature um, cutting mats, and then you could actually stick it inside there and cut over it, then you wouldn't ruin your pop-up, which I thought was a really cool thing. I got to get some of those. Like, I don't have enough stuff. I got so much stuff already. All right. There's my V-fold riser, and now it's as wide um, on the top as it is on the sides. Now what we're going to do is, let's see, should I get another color? Yes. Let's get this yellow. We're going to add something to one of these sides first. We're going to do that first. Um, I'm just going to make like a shape. Maybe I'll round it up. I mean, maybe it's going to be like this. It's kind of like, I don't know what this shape is. It's sort of a I don't know. What is that? What does that look like? I don't know what it looks like. We are going to actually, we're going to use a piece of one-sided tape. And let's see. We are going to add it. This is the pop-up closed, right? We're going to add it sticky side up right there. And I'm going to take this weird shaped piece. And I'm going to tape it on top like that. Now look at that. Look at that weird thing that it does. Let's look at that. It's moving. It's moving with this, the edge. It's moving along the edge. Now, it's not flat going this way. It could go flat, I suppose, if you taped it down. But it's real floppy right now. But what we want, to, want it to do is we want it to kind of stay straight up like that. We want it to stay in this different sort of, uh, it's in, on a different plane than where it's attached to. But there's nothing to stop it from flopping all everywhere. Like, you know, it, it, some, if you don't have a, something that guarantees that it stays in this position, it could go all over the place. So one of the things we could do to make sure that that arm stays in that plane, stays going straight up, is we could make sort of a little um, a guide. And let's take a piece of uh, our green. Where is that green? Come here, green. Light green. This is Kermit Green, I'm going to call it. Oh, did I tell you I met Kermit the Frog? Oh, my God. I'm making a Kermit the Frog pop sometime. Not today. Um, we, uh, I'll tell you all about it, perhaps. No, I met Kermit the Frog on a Disney cruise. Isn't that awesome? Oh, my God. It was so cool. So this is going to be our little, this is going to be our guide. And I'm going to make it kind of shaped like kind of shaped like a U. And what we want it to do is we want to keep this piece standing straight. I'm going to add it to the outside on, on, onto this piece. And you need to make sure that when the pop-up is totally opened, that and we have to make sure that it is always within that guide. So let's watch. That's what it looks like when it's closed. It looks pretty close like it's going to come out of there. So maybe I'll move it a bit so that it's always, let's see if that works. 
That's a little too much. Maybe we need it just like, let's try this. Okay, so now you can see, there it is, it's caught within the guide, right? Now it's always moving within that space. And what's cool about it is it's really loose. So, so yes, well, it couldn't really go flat that way. Can't really go flat that This way it's guaranteed. It won't go this way because this, this guide here is there to keep it within that track, within that plane that we we decided that's where we want it to be doesn't have to always be straight like that either there's a lot of other ways we could do it too like let's say well let's let's move our track let's move the track watch it just pull up the entire piece of paper what if we want it angled outward let's try that i'm going to take this one off i'm going to make another one let's experiment Experimenting is fun. It really is. We're just going to make another track, just like I did before. It's kind of a U-shaped thing. Told you this was weird. Told you it was weird stuff. <clears throat> what if, instead of having the arm coming straight out, what if we want it slightly angled? Like that. Like when it's opened, we want them slightly angled. We want it to kind of look like that. What if we moved that track angle to there? Let's see if that works. Sometimes we, we <laughs> including me, um, I'm experimenting and I don't know if that's gonna work for sure. So let's just try it. Okay, so that's what we want. We want something to come open like that. How's that work? That does work. But one of the things we wanna make sure it does is we wanna make sure that this arm, even when it's closed, we wanna make sure it's always within that track. It needs to always stay within there. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just going to add a little bump on the top of this arm. Maybe like this. So when you have a track like that, you want to always make sure that your piece is within it. See how I did that? So now it's within the track. Let's see how that works when it opens. There we go. It looks like that was getting in the way a little. I'm just going to snip it there. So it stays within the track. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And, and what's great is there, there's not a big, huge mechanism to make this open like a big V-fold. You could use a V-fold to make that open like that. You certainly could. But what's nice is you've got some other stuff going on here, and it's a lot looser, and you can still have a guaranteed movement happening, and it's just lighter. The less mechanisms you have working off of one main one, the better. So if you can utilize any surface, any edge, when you're building a pop-up, it's a good thing. Um, if you can utilize them without making too many more folds. Um, and something like this is really nice because it, it, it comes into place, it, it moves, and it has a pretty wide um, degree of movement, which is nice. And all it is is built off of the edge of this V-fold here. Cool, huh? Well, let's keep going. And again, I just want you to look at how that track works. What I'm going to do, ooh, you know what's a good idea? I don't know, what's a good idea? Um, well, a good idea would be to do this. Because it's kind of hard to see. I'm just going to make an edge here along this piece. So you can see the piece that is moving and versus where the little track thing is. Okay. So there's your piece. That's what it looks like. There's the arm. Now you can make the shape of the arm anything you want. But now you can see, see how it moves when it opens? It's really just following this edge here or this edge. All right, so earlier, we, we, we see now we, how we can do one that's free, one that's like by itself, right? But the thing that I showed you earlier was like the jaw of a dinosaur. And a jaw of a dinosaur isn't open like this. It actually bridges across. So let's take this off. Thank you. That was great. Now, let's maybe make a bridge going across on opposite sides of this V. Okay, 
Let's see what color we're gonna do this time. Let's get this orange so we can see it. And what we're gonna do this time, we're gonna do something a little different. Burp. What we're gonna do this time is we're gonna just make a slit. Oh, let me move all this extra stuff out of the way. Oh my gosh, what a mess. This is the state of my desk most days. It's a mess. This is, this is clean comparatively, really. Serious? Serious. I'm serious, guys. Um, no, it, it's always a mess. So it's important to keep your workspace clean, right? Oh, look at all these scissors I got everywhere. Jeez. Okay, I'm a little bit of a, a hoarder there. All right, back to this weird stuff. We're going to take this rectangle. We're going to fold it in half. I think that could work. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so this is our rectangle. It, it's it's kind of long. We're going to fold it in half. I'm also going to kind of cut in on it just kind of like that. OK. And just like before, I'm going to use some one-sided tape. I'm going to tape it along this edge right there, and it's sticky side up. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tape that down on that side. I'm going to, and now let's see what, what's happening. Okay, so it's moving. Remember the arm we had there earlier? That's the same thing. It's the same thing. But now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it over, and we're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So I'm going to tape. Uh, sticky side up along this edge right there. So see that? I can't see it because I'm too close to the camera. So that's sticky side up. We're going to fold over the other side. See that? It's going to fold over and naturally find its place right there. And now when we open and close it, look at this. Hey, that kind of looks like that dinosaur. See how the jaw moves up and it moves in tandem because it's attached to both sides. One of the things that you're going to hear that's kind of annoying, listen to this. Well, it's catching, it's kind of rubbing up against these edges down here. See that? You know what I'm going to do to fix that? It's a really simple thing. Just going to cut some of this edge right here. I'm going to do that side. I'm going to do that side too. Get those pieces out of there. That's a little nicer. Look at that. Now you could keep those pieces in there if you wanted the, the, the jaw to bow out a little bit more, right? You could do that. That makes it move much, much nicer. Look at that. Now I'm thinking, what if we had some sort of, what if we had the same thing? We have the, we have the bottom jaw and it's kind of moving up. What if we had something attached across the top here? The same sort of thing. Let's try that. So this is basically, if we really look at this, it's kind of like a, it's like a tented sort of layer going across this V-fold, right? But because it's moving, because this is attached, it's moving, right? So it's making, it's weird that it's doing that, but that's technically, I guess, what it is, but who wants to call it that? I just call it, like calling that weird stuff. Let's make the top of the head. All right, there's a rectangle, let's fold it in half. And maybe, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice already, yeesh. It's so early in the morning. That's what I do. That's dedication to you all out there. I am, I get here early. I sacrifice to teach because learning is so important. We're going to attach this upper jaw piece on this edge and this edge, just like we did before. It's going to have the sticky side up, kind of like that. I used a little bit too much tape. Don't be afraid to, if you think you use too much tape, cut it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add this just like that. Maybe I'll change the angle. Maybe I'll do it a little bit more like, let's see here, like 
that. Okay. So see how that is? See how that's attached? Okay. And then I'm going to fold my pop-up shut and I'm going to tape this edge with the sticky side up just like this. See how I did that? And I'm going to tape the other side down just like that. Now I know that my pop-up is sticking outside of my page. It's okay. We can always make a larger page. This is just to show you how this might work. Hey, look at that. R, 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 R. So now we have a moving jaw for the lower part of the jaw because it's attached to the V-fold. And the upper part of the jaw, which sort of becomes more, you know, three-dimensional as it opens. And the two come together and you have your biting mouth. So that's another way that we can use this sort of weird stuff. Um, <clears throat> floating arm mechanism. We can either bridge it, making something like a jaw or something moving like that. Or we can make what you saw before, that arm that was angled or whatever, we can do that. And it's all built off of the edge of another piece. You could use a V-fold piece, you could use a lay, there's all different types of ways that you can use those edges. But you have to experiment, you have to see if it'll work. So that's it, that's weird stuff, part one. Um, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed learning this different sort of mechanism I don't have a name for, it's just weird. But I use it all the time. Um, and um, I think it's important to learn that there, you know, when you're making a pop-up and you have all these extra edges and everything moving and doing things, they're all opportunities for you to build something. They're all opportunities. You have to see what they do and you have to add pieces to them to see how they move. And you also have to do things to guarantee that they always move within a certain way. So that's when you saw the track earlier. That, that was a guarantee that that piece, that arm would swing in that direction. But you have to make sure that it does that. You can't let it uh, flop all over the place. I mean, you could. But, but your pop-up wouldn't be guaranteed to work the way you, 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 you want it to. Um, and this is another way. The, the, the reason why this is guaranteed to move upward is because it's attached to the other side that's doing the same thing at the same time. So they're moving in unison together. But anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this weird stuff masterclass, pop-up masterclass with me. With him, Matthew Reinhardt, professor that is. Oh, yay! Hooray! Another pop up master class is done! Woohoo! I'm gonna go have some coffee in the teacher's lounge! Ha ha! Whew! That's all there is this week, folks. Be sure to tune in next time and uh, we'll learn something else weird. I wanna do a few of these weird stuff pop-up master classes with you. If you like what you've seen, be sure to hit like and subscribe. And um, if you have comments for things that you'd like to learn in the future, be sure to make those comments on my Instagram or on uh, my Facebook page, which is Pop-Up Books by Matthew Reinhardt. Those are the best places to get me or even my website at MatthewReinhardt.com. Just uh, send me a, you know, a comment, what you'd like to see, and maybe we'll get to it one day. It doesn't have to be a weird stuff thing. It could be a mechanism that uh, has a better name, but this thing, the only thing I can call it is just weird. See you next time.